Yeah, um, first off, I'd like to thank you guys all coming out today. Um, I think it's important to begin with um, for me to thank Coach Bud for everything he's done for the Hawks organization the last five years and really the community of Atlanta. Um, since the end of the season, the last few weeks, we've had several discussions. Um, through the course of those discussions, we kind of came to the conclusion it was time for both of us to part ways. Um, this was a mutual decision between uh, Bud and myself. Now I think the most important thing is for us to look to the future and uh, begin the job immediately trying to find the new head coach of the Atlanta Hawks to lead us into the future. And with that, um, I'd like to take your questions. Can you, um, he doesn't start looking for another job uh, immediately unless there's an issue. W what did he tell you was the reason? Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I really don't know that there is, there's a reason. Um, like I said, it, it's not one thing. Um, it was just the course of, you know, several conversations. We just felt like uh, this was best for him and his career. Uh, and the right time for the Hawks uh, for where we are. Well, when you asked him, why do you want to look for another job? What did he say? You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to speak for him, and those are private conversations. Um, and it, it, again, I'd like to reiterate, it wasn't one conversation. It wasn't one thing. It was just uh, kind of we felt the right time for both of us to go separate directions. And it wasn't, it wasn't, negative on either side. Um, it was just time for both of us to move forward. When the season ended or in those final weeks or whatever, were you under the impression, was your plan that he was going to be the coach the following year? Yeah, um, you and I spoke, obviously, uh, I think it was the last game of the season. Um, still didn't have any doubts that he wouldn't be our coach. Um, as I mentioned earlier, once the season came to an end, we started having conversations and um, we just felt it was time for both sides to move forward. He uh, two years on his contract. Can you reveal anything about the agreement and, and the financial side of that? Well, like any uh, agreement we have, I'm not going to disclose. But yes, he did have two years on his contract. Did you, as you look back now, would you have handled things any differently, whether it was giving him permission to talk to other teams or, you know, trying to control the narrative a little bit? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say that we have any regrets. Um, again, this was harmonious. Uh, there wasn't, you know, one side versus the other side. This was a collaborative effort. Can you say about the rest of the staff? Does that stay or will that be up to a new coach? So um, those are conversations that obviously I'm going to have to take place. Of last night uh, when we came to this conclusion, you know, one of the first things we do is we reach out and notify all the players. Um, haven't had an opportunity to speak with all the coaches yet. Um, we'll hopefully get that done here in the next few hours. Um, but, you know, that's obviously kind of up in the air now. Can you see what the reaction was by players? I, I think the players' focus is, is the same as my focus. Um, you know, I think the main goal is what's next? Who do we get? And that's where we're focused now is to go out there and get the coach that's going to lead us in the future. What Your young traits you're looking for and a new coach? Uh, I, I think for where we are right now, one of the things that is important is obviously having a coach that's going to connect with our young players, continue to develop our young players. Um, so that's going to be a big part of it. Is this a speed bump or any kind of a delay in what you guys are trying to build here? And when you, when you come in, as far as uh, you know, you come in and now the coach leaves and you have to hire a new coach. Does that? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's what you were looking for when you first came in, but does that change anything at all as you as you move forward? No, this this doesn't change our plan at all. Um, our plan is still the same. We're going to continue, and you guys have heard me sound like a broken record for a long time, but you know we're going to continue to develop our young players. We're going to tend to continue to build through the draft. We're going to continue to look to gather assets, uh, maintain our financial flexibility. Uh, this doesn't change our plan at all. How widespread? This going back to sort of Chris's question. <clears throat> How widespread will the search be? I mean, will you look at just guys who have head coaching experience? Will you look at assistant coaches that you think could be a head coach? Will you look at college guys? Or? So one of the jobs when you're in a position like mine, or really any job in management, um, you have your contingency list, right, and when there's time for change. So we certainly have a list together. Um, it, we're going to do a thorough job. Um, but whether they have head coaching experience or they're assistant coaches, uh, 
the, both both will be looked at. How many guys are on your list? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a thorough search. <laughs> is it to find somebody who understands the rebuilding process that this is going to take some time it's not just a one-year thing uh, i don't think what we're going through is anything that's new to the nba or really sports in general so i, I think most people understand that is there any did you get any sense from the players if there was a backlash i mean you can look at the situation and say bud quit on the, on the team or a, a oh. position that he was in you know being part of the rebuild they they put all in on the rebuild I, I would squash that right away. I mean, you guys watched our team play um, all to 82 games. Coach Bud didn't quit at all on this group, and certainly our players didn't quit on him, so I, I don't accept that, I guess. After the fact, though. No, I listen, again, this was conversations, dialogues that went back and forth for a couple of weeks, um, and we just felt like it was time for us to move forward, and he, he wants to move forward with his career. Travis, you may have already answered this, but what was, I guess what was the final breaking point of – just deciding to go with this, um, this all of your bullshit. Uh, again, breaking point's not a word that I would use. Uh, I know I sounded like a broken record again, but this really was mutual. Um, we both feel like this is what's best for the Hawks and what's best for him in his career. Or if not breaking point, I guess, at what point did the, the final conversation happen where, okay, this is what we're doing, this is where we're going? Um, uh, listen, Bud and I spoke 90 minutes ago. Um, Still, <laughs> you know, we've had, I don't know, I don't want to say hundreds, but a ton of different conversations. I don't, when the exact collusion came, I mean, obviously yesterday afternoon is kind of when we decided what we were going to do and we worked on getting it done. And, you know, last night, obviously around 10 o'clock, it became finalized. Um, so I guess yesterday afternoon will be the last time. But like I said, we spoke 90 minutes ago. Um, we're, this is uh, as mutual as, uh, parting can be. What was the role of ownership in all this as far as um, were they frustrated by negative connotations that may be out there that your, their coach was looking for another job? It's it certainly, I, was, I don't want to make, say it's a black eye, but it wasn't a good look. I just wondered if how much of this was from ownership. No, listen, uh, Tony Ressler and his ownership group hired me to make the basketball decisions. Um, obviously, any time there's a major decision made like this, um, Tony's going to have input and going to, you know, be involved. But, you know, he's entrusted me to make these decisions. So th this, again, is a decision that was made by Bud and myself. Um, and obviously, Tony was in the loop on it and the rest of his ownership group. There were two major decisions connected to this from an ownership standpoint. One was financial, obviously. The other is the decision when you guys split that you're basically saying you go sign with another team and there's no compensation involved from another team. Was that something that Tony had to sort of digest for a while before he agreed to? Um, obviously, Tony is involved in all these decisions. Um, we made the decision that it was best for us to do this yesterday as opposed to waiting and seeing what might happen. Um, but certainly we had his blessing. Is there a timeline you're looking for before you want the new hire to be in place? Um, I won't want to put a hard date on it, but um, we will certainly begin the search quickly. Um, I think it's important to, to make this decision. First off, we're going to do a thorough. We're not going to make a rash decision, but we're going to do a thorough job. But I think it's important to get our new coach in here um, and start the process of moving forward. Would that prefer that to happen before the draft? I would assume that it'll happen before the draft. Before the lottery? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about before the lottery, but uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna do a thorough job and we're gonna get the right guy. Well, once the lottery happens, there starts to be like the, the pre-draft workouts. Would it be fair to say that you'd want to coach in before those pre-draft workouts kind of put guys through those workouts? Um, Obviously, and I've stated this when I got the job, I want to be a partner with the coach. I want to have the coach's input on decisions. Um, so I think maybe ideally, but I don't think it's mandatory that the coach is involved in that. So. When were you made aware that Mike had intentions to interview with multiple teams? Uh, I would say that um, as that happened, and I don't really want to get into the past. I'd rather focus on the future. But you know, when the team started reaching out to us is kind of when we knew. You spoke a little bit of the partnership between Bud and you. Um, in this next incarnation, would you like to see more of a, a, a partnership between you and the head coach? Or, or were there, are there areas that 
you'd like to see more? Uh, again, you know, Bud and I have a good relationship. Um, I don't feel like we had a bad relationship at all. Um, so I, I'm, I'm fine with the relationship we had. Again, I think that obviously I want to have a great relationship with whoever the head coach is. Any more questions? Would it, would it be safe to say, though, that when you're hiring your own guy, things might be a little more comfortable, even if you didn't have necessarily a bad relationship before, but in terms of to a GM and a coach sort of being on the same page, growing together, working together, would that be uh, fair to say? <laughs> <laughs> you can nah. put it in your words. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're, we're going to find the right head coach for the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, and that coach is going to have the same job description or same end game as I do, and that's to try to bring a championship to the Atlanta Hawks. You had a, I mean, you were with the Warriors, though, and you saw how the front office worked there. I mean, coach, GM, everybody else involved, you were on that staff, how everybody was very tight and worked together, correct? Yep. Is that something you would like to see here? Yeah, and I, I feel like we had that here as well. Okay. So that's what I would say is that's something we're going to maintain here. Thank you, everybody.